I call upon Dr. Tony Crook of the School of Philosophical, Anthropological, and Film Studies. Vice Chancellor, it is my privilege to present for the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa, His Highness Tuyatua Tupua Tamasesi Taisi Efi. Afiyonga Tuyatua Tupua Tamasesi Taisi Efi was born into the highest reaches of Samoan cultural knowledge and customary status. He was fortunate to be born into a family who recognized that such privileges carry heavy responsibilities to cultural custodianship and duties to political leadership. Tuyatua's grandfather challenged colonialism's grip on Samoa and his father was amongst those guiding the country to independence in 1962, and he shared the duty of being Samoa's first head of state. Alongside these genealogical connections to some of the most paramount and royal families in Samoa, Tuyatua's family are also connected to Sweden, the United States, and Scotland. When Robert Louis Stevenson settled down in Samoa in 1890, he became great friends with Tuiatua's great-grandparents. Tuiatua's great-grandmother spoke with a Scots brogue, acquired through her teenage schooling here. His great-grandfather sold Stevenson the Hilltop Vailima estate, reportedly for a stiff price, where the Scottish writer, known locally as Tusitala, the teller of tales, built a house, lived well, and is now buried. Tuiatua's many customary titles carry the achievements of his forebears. Yet he has honored, added to, and grown these names and knowledges through a life devoted to political service and through his outstanding achievements and contributions to cultural custodianship and to academic scholarship, which we are honoring today. From 1976 to 1982, Tuiatua served two terms as Prime Minister, and from 2007 to 2017, he served two terms as Head of State. Disturbed by the growing forces of globalization and the waning relevance of Samoan customary knowledge and language in the 1970s, Tuiatua was encouraged by his wife, Her Highness Masiofo Filifilia Imo Tamasesi, to do something about it by writing a book in the Samoan language. Tuiatua has subsequently written several more books, dozens of scholarly articles and keynote addresses, bringing Samoan customary knowledge to international audiences. His topics have covered climate change, Pacific leadership, fragrance, cultural taboos, political discourse, traditional navigation, and bioethics. His Highness is highly respected as one of the foremost experts on Samoan language, culture, and philosophy. He is renowned across the Pacific region as a leading voice on finding Pacific ways to decolonize the thinking behind the social, economic, and environmental effects of a globalizing world. In the 1980s, in the late 1980s, Tuiatua was part of the South Commission, whose report, The Challenge to the South, sought to upgrade the international community by treating developing countries as equals. In 2005, Tuiatua served as the Oceania representative to the Pontifical Interreligious Dialogue Commission, and he wrote, Harmony in the Samoan indigenous religion finds equivalence and balance in all living things. To respect nature is to respect man. To respect one's fellow men is to respect oneself. Respecting the soul 
is to, is to respect the body and mind. Respecting life is to respect death. These scholarly interventions develop a method of using the Samoan indigenous reference to engage contemporary issues. In doing so, Tuia Tua avoids both reverential adherence to and also unthinking abandonment of Samoan heritage, aiming to find new ways of living in harmony in our ever-changing world. Tuia Tua's scholarship has been recognized through academic fellowships in several universities in New Zealand and Australia and has been prominent through international keynote addresses, including those at the East West Center in Hawaii and the University of the South Pacific in Fiji. Tuia Tua served as chancellor to the University of the South Pacific from 2008 to nine, and was chancellor to the National University of Samoa from 2008 to 2013. Tuia Tua's method of the Samoan indigenous reference creates space for calling out vitally important and detrimental globalized conventions that are otherwise difficult to speak about. This method and body of work clearly holds relevance and influence beyond Samoa. Ahead of the UN Climate Summit in Copenhagen in 2009, Tuia Tua used Samoan indigenous references to the way fishermen address and bestow honor on a shoal of mackerel who reciprocate by respectfully giving themselves in return to challenge the arrogance and greed of humanity separating itself from and then dominating all other forms of life. When Samoa hosted the UN Conference of Small Island Developing States in 2014, Tuia Tua took the UN Secretary General aboard the Hokulea, a majestic double-hulled voyaging canoe of the kind Pacific Islanders had used to explore and settle every island across a third of the Earth's surface by the time the University of St. Andrews was founded 600 years ago. Ban Ki-moon caught the spirit of Samoan indigenous reference in declaring that we are all in the same canoe sailing aboard the earth on a journey through the stars. In 2015, in the lead up to the UN Climate Summit in Paris, Tuia Tua paired his view of climate change from the perspective of fish with a speech to the European Union in Brussels, pointing to a Samoan indigenous reference in the refusal of two starlings to break from their enjoyable coupling despite being knocked off their conjugal branch. The example warned the international community to maintain its dialogue despite the difficulties. In fact, it was Pacific leadership which catalyzed the coalition of high ambition that reached the Paris Climate Agreement. Tuia Tua's insistence that getting into the global conversation to protect the most beautiful things in life needs the backup of great scholarship is a lesson all of us are celebrating here today. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of his major contribution to cultural custodianship and academic scholarship, I invite you to confer the degree of Doctor of Letters honoris causa on His Highness Tuia Tua Tupua Tamasesi Taisi Effie. Clap a bit more later. <laughs> Te ad gradum doctoris literarum honoris causa promoveu, cuius re in symbolum super te hoc veretum impono.
Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to receive this award, but in truth, the honor belongs to my forebears. It is they who had gathered and passed on to successive generations like mine the history, culture, customs, and usage, which is now ours. The most significant challenge for indigenous people all over the globe is how to keep our indigenous knowledges alive and thriving alongside the best in the world. When our theologies and philosophies are taken seriously by the top universities in the world, there is much to celebrate and be grateful for. It is therefore high honor for me to have the work of my forebears recognized by this very esteemed university. On behalf of my forebears and my family, I want to thank the University of St. Andrews for this special recognition. I thank in particular Madam Vice Chancellor and Principal Professor Sally Mapstone and the Center for Pacific Studies for their warm support and sponsorship. I also acknowledge the loving support of my wife and my family and friends, not only those who have traveled from far away, but also those at home who are here with us in spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll take you back to your Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't finish. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But before I, I head off, please, I want to thank uh, the choir very much. Yeah. Uh, you touched my heart. You know, when I wrote uh, thank yous to people, I, I'm hesitant, as I said last night, uh, because, you know, I've been raised in English schools, and the word love is not a, something that you say rather loosely. But in my language, it's quite common to say uh, anga, uh, and which means, you know, I send you my love, and I send it without apologies, but with great gratitude for the recognition that you've given, not only by the beautiful reception uh, for me and my party and my family, but also for the singing that recognizes, you know, our country, our common uh, values, but also the people who compose those songs. There was a beautiful rapport between you and these people, and that led me to the university and maybe let led as well in a very specific way to tonight. Thank you very much. Your Highness, we all share the profound sense of honor in uh, being with you and your family today.